Well, it's uh, never been easy uh, coming here. It's always been a, you know, a neighborhood game. I think that, uh, you know, Hobart, Syracuse goes back many years and it's always been very competitive. So we were feeling very good about coming out of here with a, a W. We've, uh, you know, we've struggled in a few games in the first half. So I thought that we improved on that. Got started out a little bit slow, but uh, finished stronger in the second quarter. And we've been strong in the, in the second half. So some of the things that we worked on this week were getting you know, better earlier and then trying to continue the things that we've done in the second half. So we were able to do that. And uh, a lot of guys that uh, at this point in the year, they've been working very hard uh, that haven't seen any, any game time. Uh, they got in the game. Some of them were able to produce and play, uh, feel a little better about themselves, a little reward for how, they, how hard they've worked. So all in all, a very good day for uh, Syracuse lacrosse. Coach, is it more of a mentality thing of, of getting in that mind frame of we have to start better than we have the last three, four games, or, or is it X's and O's? Yeah, well, I think a lot of that, I know the team has talked about that amongst themselves. We've talked to them about it. Uh, sometimes if you put too much of an emphasis on something, then they'll go out and try to force some things and make something happen too quickly. And uh, and we did a little bit in the first quarter, and then we, we, we slowed it down, and we were more patient offensively. I think we kind of, our defense knew who they were, and we matched up pretty well there. Uh, and especially in the second half when we started to pull away, a lot of that had to do with uh, Drake and the defense. I think that when Hobart did find a crack in the defense, and Drake came up with some big saves in the second half to really get us started off well in the third quarter. This one's for Nick. I know Last week, you guys just sort of came out flat-footed, just sort of got blown out there early. Even though today maybe it wasn't a smothering start, you guys were really just right with them the whole way, started mm -hmm. off with a turnover. I guess for you guys, what was different? You know, maybe in the locker room going out there, what sort of let you guys start to sort of ramp it up from there? Uh, I mean, you know, kind of like Coach said, we didn't really put a whole lot of emphasis on, you know, you know, we got to come off so much stronger than we have. You know, we don't really, we didn't really put that, you know, kind of emphasis on our defense this week for this game. Um, but we did know that you know, you know, there are some you know, some kinks in the defense and the schemes that we run that we have to fix. Um, you know, and those little those little things I think we you know put a lot more attention to. Um, and again, you know, when they did find little kinks in our armor, Drake came up huge uh, once again. So, yeah. What were some of the things you were dropping? Um, just some X's and O's stuff. Just some things we talk about in practice. More defensive terminology. Brad, every game is special, but obviously playing right down the road from where you grew up and, and getting number 250 for Coach, uh, can you touch on what that means to not only you playing so close to home, but getting that win for Coach? Yeah, I mean, I think it was a really important game for us. Uh, big bounce back game after losing to Notre Dame. Um, Midweek game against a, a ranked and rival opponent. So uh, to come here and uh, really just dominate the game uh, was very good for us. I don't think anybody knew about the 250. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know about it. We certainly didn't talk about it. So it was news to me. Um, Brad, uh, you guys seem to pregame the team a little bit. Um, you know, they're trying to work on the offense. Uh, going into Bridgeport, just start off strong. How do you think it worked out today? Uh, I think it worked out uh, pretty well. Um, just It's getting more comfortable before the game and using, you know, doing our offensive schemes before the game and just getting the guys' touches and where they're going to be on the field. Um, I think it worked out really well. I think we should do it going forward. Uh, for Brad, I was kind of wanted to ask you about the play where you jumped and blocked the clear from the goalie and also scored. Like, what did you see on that? And what kind of happened? Well, I, me and uh, I just turned the ball over, actually. So I was trying just to get the ball back because we just turned the ball over. And then I just match stick with them and uh, Drake was saying that's why he throws twisters around the guy but uh, he just like kind of just like threw it to my stick and it just kind of went in and then shot it. So. Was it kind of like nothing could go not that nothing could go wrong for you at that point you turned the ball over but right. I think it was like the 10th or 11th goal what was maybe yeah. the feeling that comes along um, with all that? I, I mean it's a, that's it could have been a big momentum goal if it, you know the game was closer when you turn the ball over and then get the ball right back and get a goal off of it so uh, I think at that point of the game things were rolling good for us so either way it was good. Coach, uh, you could make the argument that this is the most hostile road environment you're going to see all year. Um, how could that kind of help you guys, given the fact that you're going to be playing a lot of road games here to end the season? Yeah, well, uh, both things you just mentioned, you know, a road game and then uh, 
you know, being uh, <laughs> challenged from the sidelines. But, uh, uh, you know, it's a good crowd. I mean, it's uh, Hobart supports their, their team well. I imagine they support all their sports well here. It's, uh, uh, my daughter went to school here. One of my daughters went to school here. And, and uh, you know, being a little smaller school, it's got a real uh, brotherly uh, cohesiveness, if you will. And uh, so we, we kind of expected here back in the day, you know, that there, there would be carp thrown on the field and there'd be oranges thrown at the, at the team. So to not hit, get hit by a fish or hit by a frozen orange, I'll, I'll take what we had on the sidelines today. Coach, regardless of coming off the watch, I mean, how do you handle the short break, three-day break, and try to take it off a little easier, or is that the um, Well, you know, what we do is uh, you have a practice week. It goes Sunday through Saturday. So you have to take a day off within that week, and Sunday through Saturday. So we'll, we'll take, like this week coming up, we'll take purposely take tomorrow off. Uh, so that'll be our day off this week. That enabled us to practice Sunday and Monday for a Tuesday game. Uh, I don't know if that answers your question or not. Thank you, Todd. I kind of asked Coach at the beginning about taking that different mentality. For you, being one of the leaders on this team, what was the thought coming in um, to the guys and what needed to change? Well, you know, I think we find a lot of these big waves that teams, you know, seem to come up on us early in the games off of broken situations and, you know, things like fast breaks and stuff like that and turnovers. So, you know, those small little parts of the game where, you know, not everyone's really focusing on, those are the kind of things, you know, the week leading up to the games where we put a lot of our attention to. Like, um, I know, you know, in past games we've had a lot of trouble in, uh, in fast break situations. Um, maybe the communication just wasn't there. So. I think you know this game. We, we we did a lot better in that part of the game. Yeah, it's great. You, you talked a lot this year about mentality being really important to kind of keep the level head. How does that help you going up kind of a, a rougher day against Notre Dame this time around? Uh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> when you're a goalie in the cross, uh, I mean, sometimes you just gotta bear down and just think like I gotta save the ball. If I went into the day like, wow, I really need to recover from all that, like it would just be kind of dumb, and I'd be putting more pressure on myself than I need to. Uh, really, I just try to think about save the next ball, talk to G, and hopefully everything works out. Try not to overthink it too much. Brad, knowing this is your final game, uh, did Coach Hobart, your high school coach, talk to you at all this week about some of your preparation and whatnot? Uh, no, he uh, just reached out to me and said good luck. Um, we, we talked a little bit here and there and wished each other good luck and stuff like that, but nothing more than that. I know you didn't talk about the 250 win, but for it to come on such an historic day and being able to raise that trophy, uh, for you, Coach, what, what does this mean to you? Um, well, you know, I'm here at Syracuse for 19 years as an assistant coach, so uh, I had a great mentor, Noy Simmons Jr. Um, so we kind of, you know, I kind of uh, try to keep the traditions in line. And, uh, you know, I, I remember playing against Hobart, and great Hobart teams, and I'm not sure. I think we may have beat them once when I was in, in school. So I have a lot of respect for the program, uh, you know, here at Hobart. And uh, I guess I haven't really had, you know, time to uh, digest it, but uh, I guess it's, uh, it's big. You know, it's a, uh, important. It's kind of a central New York game. And um, so it's, it's, it's uh, I don't know, I don't have a – Real feel for it yet? It hasn't sunk in. Got to get ready for North, for Cornell and North Carolina. Uh, great. What was just working so well for you today? Anything you picked up scouting them? Or <coughs> was in the game? Playing well? What um, I mean, number one, our defense I thought was phenomenal today. Uh, almost like every game, uh, I'm always impressed by these guys. We were able to cover them up. The shots I was getting were. Like pretty pretty easy saves in my mind. I missed a couple. I thought I should have had to maybe help out the defense. And uh, like I say, I think I think we do have probably the best defense in the country. And uh, I I love how these guys play in front of me. I'm a lucky goalie. So I don't know if it was discussed. We played for the uh, Krause Simmons Trophy today, which is uh, you know a, a Hobart coach and uh, Roy Simmons Jr., who I played for and coached with for a number of years. Uh, and that's every time we play Hobart, it's for that trophy you know, that was here tonight. And uh, Coach Simmons Jr. Uh, was at home uh, listening. So I'm sure that he was excited to 
have the game go the way it went and we're able to bring the uh, Ralph Simmons Trophy back home. Coach, Matt Magnet had some, some time to be getting a couple games and then trying to stop some time. So for him to be able to come out tonight and then get two goals, like what did that mean for the rest of the it, It's big. I think that, uh, you know, our schedule is so competitive that we have very few games with a score like this. And he's shown great promise, and that's why he was out there early. And, and tonight he had a chance to uh, play again, and he was able to produce tonight. So I think that he's going to get a lot out of that and, uh, and build on that going forward. Thank you.